Excellent. A ripple is when something happens that affects something else, that then affects something else. It makes little tiny waves. And it gets like lighter and lighter. My mom says it's up to every company to make a splash. And that will stun the ripples. Like Patagonia protects public lands and water. Trees, animals, leaves, the ocean, the ladybug, the forest. It doesn't matter how small or big the company is, they have the ability to make a splash. DocuSign saved two and a half million trees by getting rid of the need for paper. Unilever makes lots of products that people use every day. By 2030, Unilever wants to generate so much renewable energy so that they can then share it with their neighbors. My dad works in a really tall building with 100% renewable energy. My dad works at Salesforce. They built a carbon neutral cloud. So every kid gets clean air to breathe. Clean air, clean water, and clean energy. Because the earth is for everybody. The more splashes there are, the more ripples there will be. Until the whole ocean is one big ripple will be better when we grow up when we grow up when we grow up Good morning. Should be should you be joining us from from the somewhere from the west side, i.e., from the U.S. or Brazil or those countries? But good afternoon to the rest of you. Um, very warm welcome from my side. My name is Armin Bieland. I'm the founder here at B5 Digital. And if you should be joining us for the first time, we are based in Winter, Namibia. And today on the show we have the liner. So Melina, also a warm welcome from your side. Melina is joining us from Mossel Bay, South Africa. Yay. Thank you, Armin. Thanks, everyone at V5 for the opportunity to collaborate with you. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Fantastic. All right. And with that, I just wanted to quickly take you through our agenda. So we started off with an introduction video, and we believe we at V5 Digital definitely make a splash. And so much, and even so, and likewise, Melina at, at Cantaloupe and, and Mossel Bay and Johannesburg. And we believe that every company has a responsibility to move to net zero and make a splash. So we're really aligned to, to, you know, to face to Salesforce's um, vision on that. So I'm just going to introduce um, ourselves, a quick welcome, and then we're going to hand over to Melina. There's definitely enough time on Q&A, and then we're also going to talk about it in terms of what's next. We're going to keep you here for about 55 minutes, so we should be out by 5 to 1 local time. And with that, just wanted to quickly introduce V5 Digital. So we are digital innovators and solve business challenges by providing digital marketing strategy and tech solutions to help our customers and clients reach and excite their customers and consumers. We are passionate about a lot of things. I'm not going to go into too much detail today. And one of them is definitely also what Melina and team are, are passionate about, which is marketing automation and CRM. 
yep. would like to introduce our technology partners with whom this webinar wouldn't be possible. And they are in no particular order, Rocket Seed, um, the email marketing and, and the email branding solution, Salesforce, the world's number one CRM. We are a proud partner of Salesforce since 2020. And last but definitely not least, SharpSpring, the revenue growth platform and email marketing and CRM platform. And Melina might also touch on SharpSpring a little bit during her talk um, um, because Cantaloupe is also a proud SharpSpring partner. But before we start, please use the Q&A feature to ask questions during the presentation. We will, most, we will definitely answer most of the relevant questions. Should there be a lot of questions, you're also welcome to upvote. So meaning that um, if you like a particular question, you definitely you can vote on that and that question will be, will be answered first. I believe my co-host, um, Jürgen Teichert, already um, asked you where you're from today. So if you haven't answered that question, please let us know from where you're joining us from today. So with that, um, I would like also like to remind you, should you be here for the first time, um, you can stand a chance to win a V5 Digital Diary. And all you have to do is tweet to win. So during the webinar, make sure to tweet using the hashtag V5 Africa. One lucky viewer will stand a chance to win a mold scheme diary. And I think Melina actually has one herself. And mm. uh, <laughs> version, we've got the red version, so it's really beautiful. So please yes. do participate and um, let's do this. With that, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker, Melina, and the topic, the secret source of email marketing generation. So I think you are very privileged and and to all be here because Melina is going to really give, give away that secret source of email marketing. And um, with that, I would just like to again welcome Melina and thanks so much for, for taking the time to be here. So maybe just something personal between um, Melina and me that's not that, not that juicy, um, but we actually met um, in 2018 um, virtually and yep. Um, because we were looking at the SharpSpring solution and Cantaloupe already was using SharpSpring. And um, so we've kind of been keeping contact. But then actually in January this year, we actually met um, personally for the first time in the beautiful Garden Route in, in South Africa. So that's just something personal. Um, but with that, I would like to hand over to Melina. Um, again, you know, feel free to um, make conversation in the chat. Um, tell us where you're from. Um, very important in the Q&A, please do um, ask questions when we are, once we are up in the cruise. And um, also, we're going to inject some polls during the webinar. And, and as Melina is going to um, take over, I'm going to, I'm going to start with the first poll. And um, please do participate, because then you also know how to steer the webinar from there going forward. So with that, enough from my side. Um, again, a warm welcome and over to you, Melina. Thanks so much, Armin, and thanks for the opportunity once again. I'm really excited to be doing this webinar with you. And um, just a quick intro. So I'm the founder of Cantaloupe Digital. We're an email marketing agency. We are email marketing partner to industry leaders. Some of our clients include Investec Bank, which is an international bank, and Bud Manufacturing Group. So we work in a whole range of industries. And... I'm so glad you're joining us here today. So I think almond has got a poll up for us. Is your marketing aimed at businesses or consumers? Let us know and I will try and, you know, talk more to one side or the other, or maybe you do both. Maybe you do both business to business or business and business to consumer. We'll just leave that up for a few seconds longer. Fantastic. I see the results are streaming in. So thank you so much for participating. Okay. Those of you that are still on the fence and don't really know mm -hmm. if it's either or either or both, um, just do us a favor, just go for one and the one you feel more comfortable with. And then we will probably close that poll in the next five seconds. Going, going, gone. So we <laughs> end the poll. Um, we're going to share the results. We do hope you see them. Oh, cool! And so, okay. Melina, so that's your that's your that's your first ingredient for for your for your um, webinar today. So um, I'm going to stop sharing and for you to carry on. Cool. And while you you just give me a, a heads up, and then I'm going to um, launch the second poll question. 
Okie dokie. Um, great. So I've got my screen up. Can you see it? We can. Great. Okay. So we are here today to talk about the secret sauce of email marketing and lead generation. So when Armin and I were planning this webinar and deciding on a topic, he came up with the idea of secret sauce. Secret sauce is as in the element or quality that makes something or someone successful or distinct. So that got me thinking about the MasterChef series, right? So my in-laws are MasterChef junkies, right? They are hooked. Whenever, the, whenever there's a new MasterChef series, they are there and they are watching. They are emotionally invested in the contestants and they get really upset when their favorite contestant's dish doesn't work out or the conditions don't work in the contestant's favor. They get angry with the judges and they are like shouting at the TV screen um, and cheering on their contestants. So when we sit with them, it's like watching a rugby match and you know how South Africans get about rugby, right? We are really passionate. So there's lots of cheering and shouting at the TV. It's a lot of fun and the adrenaline's pumping and we're there to watch every week because we want to see how, how things are progressing with our favorite contestants. So I see Armin's got up a quick poll for us. Uh, we want to know if you watched MasterChef. Are you a fan? Do you know what it is? Right, I see also the results are streaming in and thank you all for participating. For the sake of time, I'm going to end the poll. Thanks. So share, Let's the see. Results, share the results. We have groupies here. Ha <laughs> It's pretty close. 50-50. But I think you all know what I'm talking about, right? Although 44% of you said, no, what is MasterChef? So it was a series, and I don't even know if it's still a thing, right? Because I don't watch that much TV. Um, so MasterChef is a series where... Um, budding chefs are invited to participate and they have a challenge. They get like training and then they get to go and participate in front of all these judges and they have to cook a different meal each, each um, episode. And then they're judged on the presentation and the way it tastes and the way it looks. And so it's, it gets pretty like heated, right? Um, as the competition hots up. Um, so you should watch it sometime. I think uh, it used to be on DSTV here in South Africa, but maybe you can look on YouTube to find it. It's really entertaining. Anyway, let's dive in. We've got seven ingredients that go into your secret sauce recipe. I worked that out pretty well. Seven secret sauce ingredients. <laughs> so just to give you a heads up on what you can expect today, we're going to be talking about the message of your emails, the design, trends and some tactics you can use to boost your engagement. We're going to look at email delivery, like how do you make sure your emails are delivered into the mailboxes. Um, performance metrics help to tell you if your campaigns are doing well because you send them out there and then you want to know how are they performing. We're going to cover lead generation. What does that look like in 2022? And then I've got four really cool places I go to for inspiration. Oops. Anyway, diving straight into the message. So the thing about email is that you've really just got a few seconds to grab your subscribers' attention. Life is busy. Their mailbox is busy. So the things that are really important that they see first before they even open your email is your subject line, your sender name, and the pre-header text. So here's, some, here's a few examples so we can just know exactly what those things are. Lacquer slop is a, it's like an Airbnb in South Africa. It's, um, you can book accommodation, right? So that's their sender name. And they always use that sender name. So you start to recognize this is the brand. This is the subject line. Long weekends are for lacquer stays. And then the pre-headed text 
is the little bit of information you see, depending on your settings, and it's there to reinforce the subject line. It gives more information. It maybe expands on what's already in the subject line. And it's an opportunity to hook your subscriber in. And you have this chance to entice them to open your email. Now, an added bonus is if you can have your logo displaying on the site here, because that really helps with brand recognition. So this is obviously a mobile view that I've taken here. And this is Gmail. So Gmail supports this where you can have your logo in the email inbox. And if you can do that, it's really great for helping with brand recognition. Look how these two stand out compared to these other generic ones. So now your message, um, your, your, oh, your subject line, sender, and pre-header text has hooked the person in. Now they open your email. So now it's really important that you stick to your purpose of your email. When you write the copy, it's important that you're using a conversational tone and you personalize it where it's possible. And by personalize, I mean use your merge variable. So dear first name and where it makes sense to bring in other details that you have about your subscriber but only if they are correct, because you don't want to put incorrect information in there because that actually works against you. That will just annoy a person. Um, and obviously, don't force it. Don't use merge tags just for the sake of using merge tags. They must make sense to the, to the message of the email and the purpose. You can use segmentation. So what we do is we actually write different emails for our clients and we word it slightly differently for our prospect or we change the order of the story in our newsletter all depending on the audience. We might change a few words. So that's also personalizing and it helps to make your message more relevant. This is also where dynamic content comes in. So you can switch certain sections of your email dynamically in the system that you use like SharpSpring. It's important to write as if you're talking to one person. So it might be tempting to lump all your subscribers together and speak as though it's to a group. But really, when you are writing, think of one person that you're writing to, one buyer persona, and you find that you can be more personalized and more relevant if you do that. So I love the way this email example that I've shared in here, you've got great taste. Wow. I just read that heading and it's like, it's talking to me. It's saying, I've got great taste. So flattery will get you everywhere. And so all these shoes selected below are obviously things I've, I'm interested in that I've been looking at. So using you in your copy or our or we is, is good to do because it's more, um, it's more personal. You can have long form emails. So this example is really short, but you, you can use longer emails, like newsletters are typically longer, have more copy and less images. But the secret is to keep the sentences short and the paragraphs short because of people's attention span. And you just want to keep it easy to read. And this leads me on to the call to action. So a great tip for your call to action is to use an active verb rather than a passive verb. So active verbs inspire action, right? And they're also a great way where you can have fun with your call to action to extend your brand voice. Um, it doesn't have to be like boring. It doesn't have to be read more. Um, instead of a button saying more details, you could rather say get the details. The difference is that get the details is more active. More details is quite passive. So I like this call to action that we had a few months ago. Instead of read more, it was risk it for a biscuit. <laughs> that was a fun one. Okay, this leads me to email design. So the design of your emails is a great opportunity to expand on your brand identity. So we're talking about the colors that you use, 
We're talking about the types of fonts, the way you style your buttons, um, the position of your logo, how you place your logo, the footer, the footer in these two examples I've got here, you can see we've got social sharing links at the bottom. Um, we always have a permission reminder in our footer, which tells people how they got onto our mailing list. And it gives them obviously that mandatory unsubscribe link. So that is constant through all of our emails and it helps people recognize our brand once they've opened the mail, they know it's cantaloupe, it's orange and, and gray. And this is just how our style is. So they start to recognize it. We also have this image treatment you'll see on that photo. It's like a gradient, it's like a color gradient on the photos that we use. So this obviously depends on your corporate identity and how you're gonna translate that onto email. Something important to remember is mobile view and dark mode. So in this example, on the left is the email as you see it on your desktop, but then when you open it on your phone, the elements move beneath each other, like this cat is moved below the heading and the paragraphs move below the cat and the cat is bigger on mobile. So just be aware of how that works. And it's quite important that you develop for mobile because depending on where you are in the world, the open rates on mobile vary from like 35% to just over 60%. So it's a big chunk of your audience that experiences your brand on, on mobile. And then the example on the right is showing dark mode. So dark mode became a thing like three years ago, more or less. And it's supposed to be using less energy. So showing stuff on a dark screen uses less energy and it's easier on your eye. So I run dark mode on my mobile phone. So I'm always seeing what emails look like in dark mode. And the thing is, Gmail shows dark mode a certain way and Outlook shows dark mode another way. And so you don't really have absolute control over what color things are going to be. And you just have to keep this in mind. What's important though, is how is your logo displaying? So our logo is quite dark. It's still okay. But what we do for clients that have a black logo or have a lot of black in the logo is we might actually put the logo on a white background so that it shows like no one will know if they're seeing it in normal mode, but if they open it in dark mode, they can at least still see your logo. So those are important things to keep in mind when it comes to design. Then once you've got your design language bedded out and you've got some templates, because templates are really important to help speed up production. Templates help you stay consistent with your brand look and they help you work faster. So if you have to redo your email every time you're sending out a newsletter or doing um, an email, it's gonna take longer. So email templates um, that are specifically made for your brand really make things faster and more consistent. So once you've got that better down, it's time to have some fun. And what you can do is keep an eye out on the email trends. So um, there are three trends, which I think are really cool for 2022. And I think they're going to be around for a while, actually. So giant typography is a great trend because, you know, typography is the main communication element in an email. So it's, it's the main thing. And even if people have their images turned off, which some of them do in the email, they can still read the rest of your email, even if the images are turned off. So the typography really is something to use and take advantage of. You can do it in different colors, different sizes, um, can be bold, and it's a way of organizing the information in your email too. And these two examples that I've got on the screen are really great. Um, you can tell exactly what this mail is about, and they use the same distinct style each time. There's just another example from MailChimp. And they've actually got the second email trend, which I'm really excited about, which is custom illustration. 
So, yes, we use stock photos and um, we might use vector drawings or gradient drawings in our emails, but custom illustration is so great because it feels organic, it feels warmer, you can break from the blocky feeling that email sometimes has. So now it might not make sense for you to use illustration everywhere in your mails. Like I love this mail from David C. Baker and I subscribe to his newsletters and they're such a pleasure to read because he's always got an illustration that matches the content of his email. And then he uses typography so well. There's a lot of white space between the paragraphs, between the sentences. It's easy to read. And it, there's big headings, like that new twist on imposter syndrome. So it's a longer newsletter, but it's okay to scroll because it's written so well and everything just works great. So if you can't use custom illustration in, in a very big way, like maybe it doesn't work for your brand, you can maybe just use a custom illustration in smaller sections, like your social sharing icons, or maybe just, you know, in a couple of places in your email. But it's definitely a trend that I think you have to say, and you can have some fun with it. Something else you can do to boost engagement is animate something in your email. So if you want to draw attention to something or get people to click through on it, like for this example, it's a video and we want to boost the views of the video. So that on the screen now is an animated GIF. And it's just got a little play button on it so that you know exactly what to do. You're going to click to go off to the website to watch it. But we've given you a sneak preview in there. And it's just a few frames of the video that is turned into an animated GIF. So it's quite effective and it really drives um, video open rates, video engagement rates, sorry. So we've covered design and let's say you've got well-written content and your subject line is great and your design is amazing. None of that counts for anything if your mail doesn't get to the mailbox. So this leads us on to email delivery. The important thing to have in place with email delivery is there are certain settings that you have to do on the platform that you use, whether it's SharpSpring or MailChimp. These are DNS settings, right? So you're going to need to get your hosting company involved and your agency to help you. Um, and what happens is with each platform, there are certain settings that need to be put onto your DNS where you have your hosting. And these are SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. And what these do is they enhance the trust of your domain and of your ability to send bulk email, right? So maybe let me just show you an example that will explain this. So this example on the screen I've got, it shows that um, over here, there's a question mark in that little circle, this is in Outlook. And here's something that says, we could not verify the identity of the sender. Click here to learn more. The actual sender of this message is different to the normal sender. And that's not lacquer, right? Because um, I would be hesitant to open this mail. I'm, I wouldn't trust it. So in a data, in, a, in, a, in an age where we're so aware of data security, like mm, this, this is not good. I would rather have it like this. So here's an example where everything has been set up. We've got the DKIM, SPF, and DMARC, and we are a trusted sender. So Gmail won't complain about who we are, and neither will um, Outlook and the other mailbox providers. So that's what you want to get in order to ensure that your mails are delivered. Other things that are important is that you send to a clean list. So sometimes people make the mistake of thinking, let me take my whole list and just dump it into MailChimp or SharpSpring or, or whatever and send out. And then I'll look in the results and see which email addresses really exist. And the mail sending platform will obviously unsubscribe those that don't exist. 
And that's, don't do it that way. That's a really bad way to do it because it damages your sender reputation. A better way to clean your list is to use a list um, email verification service, which is something that we do. And um, what you really want to be aiming for is a delivery rate of above 97, 98%. Um, a good habit to also have is to not send to subscribers that don't open your mails, that are not engaged. So this also sends a signal to the ISPs that you are sending out mail that people want to receive and that helps contribute to a good reputation. And all these things work together to ensure you look like a good sender and that your mails are delivered to the mailbox. I feel like I'm going too fast. Am I going too fast? Are you guys all with me? I think we all Maybe it's time. Thank you. Thank we're you, Melina. Um, Melina, what I will do, actually, let me, let me pause quickly and inject one more poll. Yes, let's do that. So the next poll is up. You guys can just do us a favor and participate. Where are you in your email marketing journey? Are you just getting started and looking for tips or you've been doing this for years or you know your stuff? Let us know. All right. Results are streaming in. I'm going to leave it on for another 10 seconds or so. Okay. So if you're still on the fence. <laughs> just do it. There's three options. All right. Going, going, gone. I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So here they are. Oh, great. Oh, that's awesome, guys. There, there is a lot of stuff in email marketing, I must be honest. I think that it didn't used to be so complicated. I think that it would be easier to load a big fat mailing list and send it out and, you know, get pretty good results. But things have definitely changed. It's become more, um, more complicated. And also, I think subscribers our audiences are more sophisticated they expect more relevance people get quite irritated if there's things being sent to their inbox that they didn't sign up for and they're not interested in i, I get quite irritated and i subscribe to a lot of stuff um i almost take it personally when someone mails me adds me to their list and and i didn't ask to be there um, so it definitely helps to know your stuff to get things right in this game. So let's say you've got your beautiful design, your well-written email, and your delivery metrics, ugh, your SPF, your DKIM, and your DMARC is all settled. You've got a nice sending address. So now you're sending out your newsletters, and you kind of want to get an idea of, well, how are they, how are they performing? How, you know, how's... How am I doing, right? So it's important that you look at your um, campaign reports. So every time you send out a mail, the bulk of the opens and engagement are going to take place within a few hours, depending on the time you send it out, but it's within the first 24 hours. And then it obviously tapers off and it just it gets less and less. And so... You could wait about 24 hours and then go into your campaign reports and, you know, you'll see a summary of your messages sent, how many were delivered. So that delivery metrics, quite important. I mentioned we want to be delivering more than 97%. So this example has got 98% delivery rate. Open rates. Um, email platforms are still reporting open rates. But I want to tell you something about open rates, that they're not so reliable. Like email marketers used to put a lot of emphasis on the importance of open rates. 
but but now that's reduced. And the reason this is reduced is because Apple made a big change last year. They released iOS 15, which basically pre-opens all the mails that you send to anyone on your subscriber list that's using an Apple device, right? That's using Apple Mail. So that you can imagine, right? It's going to inflate your open rates and it's going to look as though lots of people are opening it, but maybe that's not the case. So the average open rate used to be around 20%. You might be seeing a little bit more than that. Like maybe you're seeing 24% now. And I think that is to be expected since the Apple change. But just, you know, don't, don't rely too heavily on the open rate. Another important metric is the click rate. Um, and what you want to be doing is getting a click rate of 2 to 3%. So we can see, yeah, in the performance report, uh, this click rate's a little bit low. But maybe this was a long-form newsletter and there wasn't a call to action. So then the click rate won't count as much because there's nothing to click to, right? The person actually read all the content inside the email. They don't have to click to go anywhere. Yeah, so just to recap, if your delivery, your delivery rate, you want to be getting above 97%. And just some terminology here, a hard bounce, because this is also in your campaign reports, a hard bounce is a permanent failure. So those email addresses are normally um, the sending platform like MailChimp or SharpSpring will stop sending email to those addresses because it's a hard bounce. It doesn't exist anymore. Um, soft bounce email addresses, that's different because that's a temporary error. So the mail sending platform will retry sending mail to soft bounced email addresses and only after a few tries will it actually move that email address to the hard bounce list if it's still failing. List growth is another really important metric. So we've talked about delivery rate, we've talked about clicks, and now we're talking about list growth. You want to keep growing your list and it's good to aim for a growth rate of 5% month on month. So if you have 2,000 subscribers this month, let's aim to add 100 and next month, obviously, a few more because you'll be growing. Another important metric to watch is the rate of retention. And that's just a nice way of saying your unsubscribe rate. <laughs> so um, people do unsubscribe from your list and that's absolutely fine. So you can expect an average unsubscribe rate of less than 1%. Well, that's what you kind of want. You want less than 1% and larger brands experience 2 to 3% unsubscribe rate. And it's really important when people sign up to your list that you manage, you set the expectation. You let them know what are they signing up to receive? How often are they going to receive it? And you must stick to that because that's they sign up based on that expectation. And it's important for trust that you deliver on what you said you were going to do. Okay. Great, let's move on to leads generation. Um, another way of growing your mailing list is obviously to use lead generation tactics. Other than the pop-up that I showed that you can have on your website and your landing pages, lead generation is another great way to keep growing your mailing list. The important thing about using paid media and lead generation on social and that sort of thing is that you need to know who you're targeting. You can waste a lot of money if you're not targeting the right audience. You obviously want to reach out to people who are interested in the things you're going to be. Um, yeah, they need to be interested in what you're saying. You need to consider demographics. You need to also consider who you don't want to target. Like maybe you don't want to target junior people in junior positions or people that have already signed up. So these are all things that can make or break your lead generation campaign. And once you've figured out your audience, 
you then create an offer, right? So an offer needs to be compelling. It needs to be, you need to be giving something of value, but you must be careful. One mistake we often see companies make is that they offer um, something too big too soon. So for example, where they offer a free consultation call, like right in the first campaign or right in the first advert. And that doesn't make sense really because the subscriber hasn't gotten to know you yet, hasn't gotten to know the brand. Um, so it's better to offer something that's like a free template or a cheat sheet or access to a webinar and, and to make it compelling, like join our mailing list is not a compelling call to action. So in this example, the offer is to join a community of people that are interested in eating plant-based food, right? Now, plant-based eating is very trendy at the moment. So this campaign is doing really well because it's targeting people interested in healthy eating, plant-based eating, and that sort of thing. So quickly to show you, lead generations, lead generation forms that are inside the social media platform like Facebook and LinkedIn have a higher conversion rate. So it's better to use those forms than to actually send people away to your landing page because you lose them. In the time it takes from clicking away from Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever platform, you lose them. So it's better to have the form in the platform that you're advertising in. And also the great benefit is that it pre-populates the subscriber's details. So it'll put their name in, their surname, their email address, which is great. Makes it easier for them to sign up. And then obviously to really succeed, it's important to integrate your systems. Like don't just set up your campaign on social and all the leads are gathering there and then it takes you like weeks to follow up. Integrate your Facebook with Sharpspring or social media or um, MailChimp, or whatever platform you're using, so that as soon as a lead signs up, they get a welcome email. It's relevant to what they signed up for. Um, welcome emails also happen to have a higher engagement rate than other emails because the person is most wanting to hear from you and are most interested in your brand when they've just joined your mailing list. So it's, it's um, important that you take advantage of that opportunity. Okay, so where to go to for inspiration? So you might watch MasterChef to go and get ideas for cooking in the kitchen, or you might watch your favorite cooking channel on Netflix. Um, but here are four places that I go to to get inspiration. This is a website called Really Good Emails. It is reallygoodemails.com. And what you can do on this website is you can search for emails that a certain brand puts out. You can search for emails um, for a certain category, like you might want to search for Mother's Day emails, or you might want to search for Black Friday emails, or you might want to search for cart abandonment emails. And you can find tons of examples in really good emails. So it's a great place to go. Um, if you are in e-commerce, MailCharts, which is mailcharts.com, um, you can see examples of all different e-commerce emails um, from the whole e-commerce lifecycle. So from welcome, welcome emails, account confirmation emails, onboarding, cart abandonment, and these are all carefully chosen by people working at MailCharts. They're carefully curated as good examples. So really great resource. And then what I like about Email Tuner, which is emailtuner.com, is that it's a newsletter archive and it's really up to date. You can go and search for mails that were sent out last week or last month and then see what's going on in the whole email marketing industry, what sort of um, emails are being sent out. And you can obviously also search for brands and different types of categories. 
So those are three sites that are great sources of inspiration. And lastly, my own inbox, <laughs> because I subscribe to a lot of stuff. And then I have rules set up to send things, oops, to send things into folders so that it's just there when I want to go see, oh, what has Campaign Monitor sent out? What has Chase Diamond, who's a really awesome e-commerce marketer, sent out? What has been sent out by all things email? And I go and look and see all of that stuff. So, for example, here, I can see exactly how Iterable set up their campaign to promote people to attend their conference. The email at the bottom is obviously the first one they sent out and they started promoting it in February and the event was last Wednesday, the 6th of April. So I can see how many mails they sent out leading up to the event. And I find this really, really useful to see what other marketers are doing and to get ideas. So my friends, there you have it. Seven secret sauce ingredients. And I've just put a quick summary up, just so it's there so you can remember. And you may have some questions that you'd like to ask. And you're welcome to go ahead. Thank you so much, Melina. That was amazing. And yeah, I mean, we do, we do know quite a bit about email marketing, but I think you definitely yes. gave us here at VFAP Digital also your secret sauce. So quite a few <laughs> things we kind of... Um, researched on but not really yeah. confident about so i think um thank you so much and this is really a comprehensive secret source list so thank you for for giving it all away <laughs> to to us and to our audience so um that was really amazing so with that i would like to open the floor for any kinds of questions you might have um you're also gonna um, while you're getting your questions ready you're also gonna just inject one more poll um, just to see where if you might need help on the on the email marketing side. So with that, I'm just going to launch the the question. So if you don't mind, and um, please do participate going forward. I might need help with, and if you can just select whatever um, whatever is applicable for you. This one is a multiple choice, so more than one answer is um, is valid. So the, the answers are streaming in, which is fantastic. So mm -hmm. you keep on participating. Maybe give it another 20 or so seconds. We don't see any questions yet on the chat, which can mean two things. Either you know everything about <laughs> marketing and lead generation already. Um, it could mean that... Melina was extremely clear, which um, definitely that's the way I perceived it. Um, very clear, very to the point that um, there are no further questions. Or it could me mean, um, it might be one or two of you in the audience that it is you know, so advanced or so unclear that, um, yeah. Yeah, that you just don't know where to, where to start with your questions. But it would be great for you to, to please come forward with your question. Um, yeah, so just for us to, to essentially help you, because essentially that's what the V5 Africa series is all about, to making sure that we are broadening um, our digital knowledge ourselves, but also taking that knowledge to, you know, to our fans and followers, um, not only in Namibia, but actually mm. on, the, on the African continent and, and around the world. Absolutely. So, so maybe while... Um, you guys are still thinking about your question. Um, one or two things about the V5 Africa series. So this is our 10th V5 Africa webinar. And the 11th, um, believe it or not, it's coming up on the 11th of May. And that one will all be about advanced social media targeting and performance targeting and performance media. So but we'll share um, a little bit more about that just now. So I'm going to end the poll just to see... How are we doing? And I'm going to share the results. So the results are in. So some of you might need help with email marketing platform selection. So you're more than welcome to talk to either Melina or myself afterwards. Um, 
there are some of you that might need help with, with triggers and workflows. So that's typically the more advanced um, kind of touching onto the next answer as well, the advanced marketing automation in CRM. Mm. So again, um, because it's definitely not easy these days to, to, you know, to set up an email and to send it out and to make sure it ticks all the boxes. But I think with, with um, Linus recipe and secret sauce, you now have a head start. But what we really haven't touched today and we just didn't have enough time is, you know, maybe triggers and workflows and, um, you know, integrating your CRM if it's not integrated. Mm. Also to, I guess, automate those consumer journeys then going forward. So meaning if someone has maybe clicked on something, or opened your email or not opened your email, what do you do next? Um, you know, how do you, how do you take that consumer on a, on a, on a real amazing customer centric journey. And that's something we can definitely, um, you know, help you with from B5 Digital's point of view, but definitely also from Cantaloupe's point of view. So mm. you're welcome to come forward. And um, if, um, also I think maybe just one thing to mention, if there's enough demand, we can definitely also have another webinar on that, just more on the advanced um, intricacies of, of email marketing and, and marketing automation. We did. Yeah, we could do a masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we did. Um, we did also inject one one um, link in the chat. So the one, actually two. Um, the one was about about iOS 15. So you're more than welcome to take a look through that one. How that implies your, um, you know, your open your open rate, etc. And then there's another one which we did as V5 did it last uh -huh. year with with Tim from from Sharp Spring titled the Revenue Growth Platform. So that one is also a really nice webinar just to um, end to end explain Sharp Spring how it works, um, you know how does it work with the lead generation and things like that. So you're more than welcome to take a look at those resources as well. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing the poll. Um, Jürgen will let me know if there's any more questions um, coming through, um, either on the Q and A see. or on the on the chat? I see there's actually a few on the on the chat. Mm, there are, yeah. Um, Melina, would you like to answer? I'll take the one. one. Or should I? Yeah, let me start. I'll start quickly in the chat. Um, hey, Fiona. So. Fiona asks, is there a quick and easy way to clean subscribers? Um, is there an app? So there are, there are apps. I can't recall what they're called right now, but actually we prefer to do this in-house. And the reason is that we get um, more thorough results. We get up to 98% delivery rate up after we've cleaned a list. And obviously we give the reports back to you where we tell you these are the invalid addresses so that you can go and contact the people again and get their new address and we obviously recommend that you only then email the people whose ad addresses are in fact existing so that's something that we do in-house um, and then Morgan asks this might be an advanced question when it comes to click rates the email platform that you use how does it get around robotic clicks and mail scanners Oh, that's a question for both of us. Hey, Armin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping you, so, so first of all, welcome, Morgan. Morgan is from from Rocket Seat, um, one of our hey, Morgan. one of our partners. So um, it's great to have you here, Morgan. So I would yes. like to I would like to push that question back to to Melina, if you don't mind. Otherwise, I have to make something up. <laughs> well, it does very much depend on the platform that you use, right? I think bigger enterprise type platforms are going to have more tools at your that you can use to get around that. And um, things that are free and cost less, you obviously, you're getting all of those clicks in there as well. So that would be my answer. Maybe if you can just add to that one, um, Alain and Morgan. So and I think it latches on to the earlier question that Fiona had. So if you run your your list, um, you know, through a through a platform like a, like a Bright Verify or whatever might be out there, so that program will actually then tell you of the list. So you've submitted a thousand email addresses. It will then tell you how many of them are real. 
how many of them are spam traps, how many of them are, um, I think there's, there's, there's quite a few categories. But essentially, if you do that, then you definitely don't have an issue of um, getting any robotic clicks or mail sc scanners at all. So the short answer is um, run your list through, through, a, through a verifier and then only send to a verified list and then you shouldn't have that issue. And it might be that some of the platforms have that verification built in and, mm -hmm. and um, essentially it will, it will either be a bolt on or an, I guess, an extension. Um, but with others, you would need to specifically select that, um, that platform, run your list through that, and then from there on, just send it out to the clean list. Thank you, yep. Morgan. Hope you answered the question. If not, um, let us know. Okay. Yeah, I think the other questions are in the Q and A. Then there are a few. Okay. There are a few. I'll, I'll just read them um, off to you because sometimes it's a bit. Um, you don't always see all the questions. There was one question from Karen Pillay. Often, of, I hope I pronounced your surname correctly, Karen. Often in my personal email, I just dump without reading, especially if I don't sign up as you indicated. It frustrates, okay. it frustrates you if you don't give consent. Thank you for the tips. It was great. So I think it was more a comment, it seems. Mm. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, Karen. And then I yes, Ali, again, um, sorry for the pronunciation. What is the best day and time to send marketing emails for services which we are offering? And I see that question is actually also on the Q&A. So yes, 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 it's there. Um, I ask, what does your company offer? What do you do? I, look, I, I, must, I mean, a general comment or a general answer is that I think the world has changed so much. You could actually st send out and see how it performs. What I do find though, that consistency is really important. Um, so if you're making the habit of sending your newsletter on Thursdays, then stick with that. Um, personal development brands do well to send on a Sunday because people are like, I suppose they're getting ready for the week. They're thinking about their objectives and what they want to achieve. And then they're looking at personal development stuff. And yeah, so that's just an observation. Personal care brands as well. Personal care brands can send any day of the week, weekends included. Like if you're, if you're selling contact lenses or vitamins, you could probably send any day of the week. I think emails to businesses between Tuesday and Thursday or is better. And that's just what, what we've observed. Absolutely. absolutely. I'm just going to um, also chip in here. Ayaz, I see the follow on or answer was IT services. So ah, that, okay. that would then fall probably on to the Tuesday to Thursday. Mm. Um, yes. Maybe just one thing to add. So the, the very, very advanced marketing platforms, for instance, like a, like a Salesforce marketing cloud, they would use AI, um, built, built in um, um, AI, um, they call it Einstein. So with that, um, what actually happens there that, for instance, you would actually schedule the email, but um, the AI would actually then, and obviously it needs to have some kind of history. So it needs to, for instance, if it's, if it's um, Ayas and um, Elena and myself, it will then be okay. <laughs> When does Armin typically read an email? And there's obviously lots of you know, data points plugged in then. Um, so you would need to, first of all, you can't do it with five people, but if you've got a big database, say what, 10,000, 100,000, and you do that consistently, the system will then teach itself, teach itself and say, okay, Armin tends to open you know, emails from, you know, from, um, from subscriber list at a certain time. Um, in the week and a certain time of day. And then what it actually does then, it doesn't matter when you send it out. So say you schedule it for Monday morning, eight o'clock, but then it will actually say, okay, Armin reads it on Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. So the one to Armin is only going to be sent at that point in time. So that's really, if you're really going the advanced route, um, that's really for the, for the big enterprise systems. Mm. Um, more questions? I'm not sure what Tanvir, Tanvir, if that is a question. Um, 
Tan, we had actually f um, four questions. I'm just going to try to read them off to you, Melina. So like we do Salesforce development and approaching for the service. When is a good time to reach? Also wanted to know about the follow-up frequency. And I guess that, again, that very much depends on the, on the service you're offering. Hmm. And um, so these were kind of you know, questions from, from Tanvir Khan. I'm not sure if you want to tackle any of those. I think you've kind of answered, like, when is a good time to reach? So if you're using Salesforce, then, as you've mentioned, there's something built in. I just wonder how they handle it for all the, the iOS 15 pre-opens, because then it skews your open time. And I'm not sure how Salesforce would be working around that and if they can, actually. Absolutely. I don't know the answer, um, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the example I just gave was before, you know, before the iOS um, update. Yeah. What the new is. But that's definitely something we could, you know, we could research internally and then get back to, to all of you. Um, mm -hmm. One more question from my friend, Brendan. Brendan, um, big shout out to you. Brendan is joining us from Spain this afternoon. And I think we have kind of answered the one already. So what's the best day and time to send my marketing emails? Maybe a bit of personal insight. Brendan, hope, hopefully you're not going to shout at me. But Brendan and his partner, they are in the business of Pilates classes. So maybe um, you want to um, have a have a have a go at that one, Melina, for, especially for Brandon in Spain with Pilates classes. Okay. And then also a follow-up question from Brandon would be, or was rather, isn't social media marketing taking the place of email marketing? Okay, so best day and time. So personal care, I mean, I think Pilates falls into health and personal care. You're okay to send mails on the weekends. Um. Early in the morning, too, from what I've seen, is like before eight o'clock um, is good because people are planning those personal care type things. And then your question about social media taking the place, I think it's more a case of those two things working together. You might build awareness on social, like you might run, run leads generation campaigns on social media and, and create an audience, build an audience, but you do want to get them to sign up to your mailing list. And even when they join your classes, get their email address and nurture them, you know, welcome them to the classes, um, explain, like do an onboarding sequence where you explain um, the first few times you come, you might feel stiff. And then these are the benefits you're going to start seeing. By your third lesson, you're going to feel this way. So email is great for that. But I don't think it's a case of either social media, social media or email marketing. I think it's a case of both and using those channels together. Absolutely. We would definitely agree with that. Since at B5 Digital, we do both. Um, but definitely, I mean, if you if you look at the research, so your your email marketing is probably the channel with the with the, with the, the highest um, return on investment. But again, mm -hmm. you probably, I mean, you can't if you if you're starting a company from scratch, you can't start with email marketing. You probably need your social media to help you grow your email marketing list, and then from mm -hmm. there you can you can carry on with email marketing as your maybe your main um, you know source of distributing content. But um, I think social media will always be there to help you along there. So with that, um, if there's no more questions, um, I don't see any fresh questions. Um, Jürgen will also give me a heads up here. Um, but if there's more questions, do let us know. We are a little bit in overtime already. So with that, I would just like to quickly tell you what's next. And I think I've been alluding to that earlier on already. So we are done with the Q&A. So thank you for all for participating. That was amazing. Thank you, everyone. Some and, great questions. And I'm just going to quickly tell you what's next. So the next V5 Africa topic, and the good thing for you is we do not have a speaker as yet. So if you think you are an absolute expert in the field of advanced social media targeting, or maybe a colleague, a friend, your former boss, whoever it might be, um, please do come forward with, with some, with some um, high profile names like, like with Melina now. Um, so please do come mm -hmm. forward. 
Um, but the next topic is definitely going to be on advanced social media targeting and how to optimize your social media ad spend with advanced targeting options. And that is going to be on the 11th of May. So tomorrow, if you receive your, um, your recording, so that, that recording, by the way, goes out tomorrow at about noon via Zoom. So the recording will be ready tomorrow. But with that, there's also going to be a link to sign up to the next webinar. So you'll be just giving away on the screen here in terms of what it's all about. But the okay. keynote speaker for that will be confirmed. So we're really looking forward to that one on the 11th of May. Please do sign up once that link becomes available tomorrow. And with that, I would just like to thank you from, from the core digital team, myself, Jonathan and Jürgen. And thank you for participating and for enjoying this amazing secret source of email marketing and lead generation that um, Melina has shared with us today. And again, Melina, thank you so much for your time. You know, you're, <laughs> Thanks, Armin. You're, you're a young, busy um, executive, and um, it's always difficult to get, to get a, you know, just maybe 10 minutes of your time, but you actually offered a whole, whole hour of dedicated time plus preparation. So we're very grateful for that. And just wanted to thank, thank you for that. And um, on the chat, I don't see any more questions. And with that, I would like to close the webinar. Um, thank you, Armin. And just thank you all for participating. And happy Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Ciao.